Hey Power Appers, this is Brian Knight again from Pragmatic Works. And today's video, we're gonna focus on how we create self joins inside a Dataverse and visualizing that in a model driven app. So stay tuned. Welcome back. This video is part of a three-part series. In our first video, we explored how the different relationship types inside of Dataverse and how we relate tables together and the repercussions of deleting a parent record. In this video, we're going to focus instead on how we create a self-join in, in Dataverse. In other words, a project can have a project. A teach, a, uh, um, maybe a principal has a teacher, a teacher has a student kind of creating that relationship type in our tables. This is not talking about security relationships, but more about the data relationships. So let's see how we can do this in Dataverse. So first of all, I've got our basic application already open, and I'm gonna go ahead and create under my, my main solution. So I'm in the solutions right now, and I've created uh, a two table solution. I'm gonna go to my capital expense projects, and I'm gonna create a new column, and that new column is a project, a parent project can have a whole series of children projects. And those children projects can have children projects and all the way down the chain. So let's hit an add column and I'm gonna create a new column here. This column is gonna be called uh, parent project. So when I'm at a child project, defining the child project, I can say, who is, its, who is this parent, this, this, uh, this project's daddy or mommy? All right, this is going to be a lookup column against the same table I'm already in. So the capital expense table. All right, there we go. Let me get rid of my face so you can see the whole thing. Uh, there we go, capital expense, oh, I'm right in front of me, there we go. All right, and this is not, it's gonna be optional, so if, it, if there's no record inside of that, that means it could be, it could, it's a, the parent project in that case. I'll hit done, and then I'll save this. Okay. That's all there is to doing the first stage of this. Now, what we've done here is we basically created a hierarchy between the table and its own records. So you'll see in relationships, I have in this table a, oh, that's a minute, excuse me. Um, there we go. So capital expense has a relationship to capital expense. There it is right there. So we, have, we already see that relationship type and it's a many to, many to one in this case. So one project can have many children projects, or in this case, many children projects can have one parent project. So let me go ahead and add this to my form so we can kind of start playing now. And you're going to see some really neat stuff that this gives us access to. I have to create this. I'm going to add this to my form and my view just so we can visualize this data. So I'm going to add my amount and I'll also add the parent project. All right. Let me save and publish that. And I'll do the same thing in the view as well. Now that view is going to give us the really cool visual. And there's one more piece that we have to do to turn on the visual. If we're going to see the visual, it's going to look like we're right there, like it's right there ready to go, but it's not going to work yet. So there's one piece I need to do around that. Okay, and that's creating the hierarchy. Let me go to my view and go to active, active projects here. I'm just going to add this uh, parent project to this view as well. I'll add the amount and the parent project. Save and publish. All right, now we have all of our visuals ready to go. Let's make our data where it now supports that also. So I'm going to go back to the application that I've already built. I'm going to do a hard refresh of this application so I can kind of get the latest metadata. I'll go to my capital expense project and I'm going to create a new sub project underneath building B's uh, um, and I'll call this just, I don't know, lab equipment or research lab uh, expansion. All right. And this research lab is going to cost me whatever money and it's, it's related to building B construction. I want to hit save. There we go. All right, so now we can see that this project, the research lab, is relating to project B. And I could go to project B now and say, well, show me all the sub-projects underneath this. And we'll see there's that's the only sub-project I have underneath this. So some really cool things we can do by creating that self-join relationship. All right, so now let me go ahead and create one more just so we can kind of see the cool visual that we'll have here. I'll call this a uh, new flooring. Okay, whatever, and I'll make that building B as well, and I'll hit save and close. Okay, I'm gonna do a hard refresh on this. Now, we can't quite see it yet, but we're about to create a, a relationship. There's two pieces we need to do to do this. My first step is 
I'm going to go back to my table and I'm going to go look at that relationship we created a moment ago. So under relationships, we have that capital expense project relationship. I'll click on this and you'll see a button here for hierarchical. When I check this and I hit done and then I hit save and get rid of that so you can see everything. And when I hit save, All right, now let's go and refresh the app and see how it looks. So again, I clicked on the relation, clicked on the uh, the actual relationship in the relationship tab, and I checked the hierarchical. So it recognizes it's a self join. Now, what does that look like when I hit a hard refresh? Now, look at what we get now. So now we can see these projects all have some type of relationship in iHierarchy. So when I select when I select building B, for example, we're going to get our final error. Now it looks really close, right? This is what I was saying before that. It looks like we're there, but when I, it's saying that the administrator has to do something else. So when I hit OK, it crashes basically and, 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 leave, and uh, leaves us. So I have to do one more piece of this. Now this also works, by the way, with roll-ups and all those kind of things. You can actually take all the children projects and roll up values using Dataverse as well. So show me the, all the child amounts and show me the total parent project amount, including all the children ones. So really neat things you can do like that. But let's go and actually finalize this, fix this error once and for all. To do that, I'm going to go in and make sure you're in a solution. You cannot do this outside of solution. You can, but it's, it's a little more tricky outside of a solution. So I'm going to hit switch to classic. Right now, the only way to do this at the time of this recording is going to classic. Now that will likely change very, very soon. Classic is the old uh, the old view that you have um, from a, uh, and, I, and I realize I just I messed that up here. Let me go show you how I got here again. I'm in my solution and I hit switch to classic. Classic is your old dynamics view that kind of we inherited as for a data verse. Uh, but when I select this, I'll go and find my uh, my table, which I think I'm in capital expense table here. And as I scroll down, you're going to see an option to get rid of my face again here, so I can kind of. Zoom in a little closer here for you. Uh, what we're going to see here is hierarchy settings right here. So at the table, we've set it at the column, the relationship level. We have not set it at the table level. So when I go to the table uh, hierarchy settings, for some reason it's not refreshing. Let me try going to fit somewhere else and then coming back to it. Okay, there it goes. Finally came out. I need to create a new hierarchy. So I hit new. I'm going to give it a name of some sort. I'll call this just uh, uh, project hierarchy. Okay. Notice it has my solution name on it. Uh, what kind of form do you want to show? This is why this is this is here at a. This is why this is here at a um, at a at a at a table setting. So you can control exactly what somebody sees in this visualization now. So I'll kind of say I'll say my information form. Okay, this is a quick view form we'll, we'll come back to later. I'll show you what that looks like. And I can put whatever description I want in here because it doesn't matter. All right, and we can also create a new view here as well. But we'll start, we'll stop here. I'll hit save and close. Just keep a mental note on that information quick view form. That's going to come into play a little bit later here. So when I hit save and close, all right, I'll save the whole table now. And I'll publish this table just for good measure up top here. Again, this is a classic mode, so it's a little bit different here sometimes. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and leave this tab. Go ahead and close that tab. Uh, I'm going to refresh this to make sure I have the latest metadata out of this as well. The piece that is missing here, and I'll show you what I mean, uh, is let, let me go to the form and I'll show you what I mean here. I'm going to hard refresh my app by hitting control and refresh. And then I'll go to building B here and now the error goes away and I can kind of navigate through this. Wouldn't it be great though if I could also see the value of those projects, not just the owner and the name, but the value. And that's where that quick view form comes in. So we can kind of navigate through this. And if I wanted to, I can select the research project, double click on it, and we can jump right to it if you wanted to as well by clicking on its name. Now in my case though, what I want to see is a little more advanced form. So I'm going to go back one more time so you can see this. I want to show the amount here instead of just the name and the, the owner and the, um, uh, the title of the project. So to do that, I'm going to go to my forms and look for the quick view form. Now I could have created my own quick view form, but I just hijacked an existing one. I'll select it, I'll go to my labels, and I'll go ahead and add um, the amount to this. I'm going to sort it accordingly, so I had the amount up top, I had my owner. I don't really care about the owner of this, so I could even go through and hide it if I wanted to as well. 
Uh, and I'll do that. I'll go ahead and hide that as well. And then I'll hit save and then publish. And then once I've done that, we should now be able to see this view a little bit cleaner. So if I go, I want somebody for it to publish, hit back. I'll go in and do a hard refresh on this again. And look at that. We now have an amount inside of here as well. So you can control exactly what shows up in this hierarchical view. You also can navigate it this way and kind of select the different relationships. One common question is, what if I have more than just two? What if I had 20? You would actually see a little right arrow over here where you can kind of flip, flip horizontally and see all those relationships. The other common question I get asked is, does it support multiple hierarchies? Yes, these sub-projects can have sub-projects. So if I wanted to go ahead and select my research lab here and say, hey, what's related? what are the related projects to this one? I could go ahead and create a new, a new uh, project here, and I'll call this new sub-sub-project, for example. Give it an amount of whatever. Hit save and close. And now check on this. If I go back to my, my projects, go over here. Now we have this new uh, relationship here. So we're basically creating a full hierarchy, hierarchical relationship. If something did not have any children projects, it would show uh, by itself with no hierarchy icon next to it at all. Pretty cool feature though, right? So this feature is part of Dataverse. It is a super easy piece to do, and it does work. Now the hierarchy icon is not working Canvas applications, but you can use PowerFX to navigate up and down that hierarchy if you wanted to as well. So lots of neat stuff you can do there. I right, hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this and this is worthwhile to you, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching us today. This is part of our training that we do at Pragmatic Works. You can find more about our training at pragmaticworks.com. We do boot camps and we also do hackathons to help you ramp up and power apps. Have a great day and stay tuned for our next in our series about how to create many-to-many -many relationships.